Okay. Good morning. Well, it's good to see you, ugly crew. It's, it's, uh, somebody said to me, that's not an ugly sweater you've got. I said, well, to be honest, even I wouldn't wear it normally. You know? Some of you know I wear some interesting stuff, but even I wouldn't. But it's, it's, it's great. I, I love Christmas. So much fun. So many things we are able to do. I mean, I'm, I'm looking out here seeing lights flashing on sweaters. It's fabulous. And I, I think one of the most original is the husband and wife are, who are here in, in, in the two-for-one sweater. It's like, it's like, great stuff, Ed and Donna. I love that. You're welcome. It was my sweater when I was 100 pounds heavier. Uh, there we go. <laughs> There we go. But uh, fabulous. And as Charlotte said, if you're visiting with us, thanks so much for being here. I've met some new folks already before service. The other, the other, um, the other thing that I, I was really very happy about before service was I met some folks who were here for the second time. And, and that's always huge. It's, it's, great. it's great to meet people first time, but when they come back, that's even better still. So great to have you all here. I know we get a bit congested nowadays on Sunday mornings, and we all like personal space, but um, bear with us. We're thinking about solutions, all right? And uh, it's a good problem to have, isn't it? It, re it really is. Hey, one of the things we do um, year-round, of course, is a lot of outreach into the community through our program that's called Grace Care, uh, helping those that are in need. And there are so many programs under the umbrella of Grace Care. For instance, yesterday, as every Saturday afternoon, our mobile soup kitchen went down into Patchogue, served dinners uh, to folks who are homeless who, or who are struggling, and also yesterday had a donation, significant donation, of coats and hats and gloves from a coat drive that State Senator Dean Murray had, had arranged, and he donated them to us which was fabulous, and they all went. Folks really needed them and appreciated them. So much we do. Um, this time of year, though, we just throw this out to you all. You all do so much. But around this time of year, some businesses are ready to, looking to make a charitable donation. And so what we want to suggest to you is this. If you work for a company that you know does that, or you're in a position to ask them, do they do that, or would they? There, there is a flyer that um, Ken and Ginny have put together, and Ken is going to be out, out by the front desk after service. If you could take one of these and take it to where you work, and if you're a business owner, we'll toss it straight out to you. If you'd like to make a year-end you know, um, tax-exempt donation, um, please feel free it's an incredible cause. Um, it's reaching an amazing amount of people. Um, we got the stats on here, right? Oh, they're too small for me to read. But anyway, a lot of people, right? What's, what's kind of the number of people we feed in a year? Is that on here? What's the number, Ken? Sorry? 36,000. 36, All right. We got no idea coming in and out Sunday what else is going on here during the week. Truth is, this building is used more for outreach to the community than it is for services. And I like that balance. That's pretty cool. Because what happens is this. Sunday mornings here motivate us to go out there and be the hands and feet of Jesus to those in need. Please do talk to Ken at the end of the service because this is a good time of year for businesses to make um, commitments and donations. Okay, let's pray, and then we're going to turn to God's Word together. Father, thank you for your amazing love for us. Thank you for your care for us. Thank you, Lord, that you've brought us together here today. Already, you've been reminding us of who you are, and we pray that each of us will hear your voice. Lord, we all need you today. Speak to us in ways that will minister to those needs, we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, over, over the, um, the month of December, we are in a teaching series which we've called Home for Christmas. And I kind of uh, 
don't know if I set the, the, the table for that last week or didn't, um, because last week I just made the point, none of us is home yet. Wherever we might spend Christmas, none of us is home yet, because this earth is not home. Our home is somewhere far different, and, and our home is something that is far more permanent. But we call this series Home for Christmas because, y- you know what, there's so, many, there's so many facets of being home that really are seen clearly in the Christmas story. When, when I was in Bible college, um, if I was going to go home for Christmas, here was the way it worked. I did not have a car. So I walked from our college down to the, the local station. I took the train up to London King's Cross Station. I got a cab across London to Paddington Station. I took the train from Paddington down to Exeter Station, which is where I lived. And I got off in Exeter. My father was always working, so he wasn't around to pick me up. So I got a cab from the station in Exeter and arrived at my home. And then when I got to our house, I just walked straight in. I didn't need to ring the doorbell. I didn't need to knock. I didn't need to see if they let me in. I didn't need a key because we only ever locked our front door at nighttime. I just came to the house and walked in. You know why? I was home. And at home, I was fully accepted. And one of the things we see in the Christmas story in the Bible is it reminds us of this. We are fully accepted by God. Home is a place where we're totally accepted, right? Right? You can kick off your shoes and walk around in your socks. Occasionally, your wife will shout at you for doing it, but you can do that. <laughs> Be careful, I've got to go home after this. But there, there, there are. There are, a lot of, there are a, lot of, um, a, a, a lot of things about home that come through the Christmas story. And uh, today, we're going to talk about home being a place of full acceptance. Next week, we're going to look at home being a place of real joy. And then on Christmas Eve, we'll look that home is a place of precious memories. Today, we're going to take a look at a a verse in Luke's gospel that really reminds us that we're fully accepted by God. It's set in the little town of Nazareth. I had the opportunity to be in Nazareth all the way back in 1978. I, I only remember three things about my visit to Nazareth. One was it's got this incredible, huge, beautiful Church of the Annunciation, which they say is built over the place that the angel appeared to Mary and say she'd give birth to Jesus. Our guide refused to take us in there. She said, I'll drop you outside. I'm not going in. Because I can't understand how you Christians can put millions and millions of dollars into a building while the people living around it are in squalor. And she might have had a point. The other thing I remember about Nazareth is we're walking down the street and I see a group of guys just sitting out on the sidewalk around a little round table and drinking coffee. And, I, you know, I, being me, said, is that good coffee? And one of the guys says, the best. You want some? I said, yeah. So he gave me, it was a tiny little cup of thick, thick, black, syrupy stuff. Sweet, black. It might have been the best coffee I ever had, except... There were little bits of something in it you had to pause and spit out as you drank it. <laughs> and then the classic reminder of Nazareth for me was, was when we got to, we were going to cross a road, and there were a few of us there. I'd taken a group with me to Israel. My mother and father were part of that group. And uh, we got to, we, we, we were at a, um, we were at a, at a crossing. We were going to, we were going to cross the street in Nazareth, and, 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 Traffic in there is, is like, it's almost like Manhattan style, but there's less order to it. And it's like, it's absolutely crazy. They reckon that the standard driver, when he was going to buy a car, asked what the horn sounded like first. <laughs> he didn't care if there was an engine, so long as the horn sounded good. And so this traffic is going, and we're, we're there at the crosswalk, and, and nobody's slowing down, nobody's stopping, nobody's paying any attention. And my mother in her 60s probably at the time, interesting lady, wonderful lady, she said, this is ridiculous. <laughs> she put her head up in the air, 
put her hand up and walked across the road. And we followed, and every car stopped. It's like, dear me, Moses needed you at the Red Sea. It was like... But Nazareth in Jesus' day was a very, very small community. They reckon there were no more than 500 people who lived there. So, so what, what are we talking about? Perhaps 100 homes. It was a tiny place. So it was to this obscure place to a teenage girl that the angel Gabriel comes. And, and here's, here's the Bible verse. Luke 1, verse 28. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. That was quite an introduction and quite a description of how the angel and therefore how God looked upon Mary. You are highly favored. The Lord is with you. You are blessed. Now, Nazareth being a small town, I can imagine because we lived in a small community in Scotland for 15 years before we came here. We had about 600 homes in our community. But some of you will, will perhaps have lived in small places and know that if you live in a small place, everybody knows your business. And if they don't, they want to. <laughs> right? And what they don't know, they'll make up. <laughs> so everybody knows your business. And, and, and the fact is that immediately the angel made this announcement to Mary. The angel also said to Mary, your cousin Elizabeth is expecting. She's six months on. Go and spend some time with her. So Mary suddenly disappears from Nazareth and spends three months with Elizabeth and comes back starting to show that she's pregnant. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Truth is, a victim of gossip never ends up a winner, do they? But the thing is this. How her neighbors saw Mary was secondary to what God thought of Mary. You are highly favored. The Lord is with you. You are blessed. And I just want to remind you all today whatever others might think of you in certain circles, or wherever you might be right now, even in your own self-esteem, it's what God thinks about you that really matters. And here's what God says about you. You are highly favored. The Lord is with you. And you are blessed. I love this stuff. Because some of you are probably here today and you come through a hell of a week. And I use that word you know, with thought. But this week has been the roughest week perhaps for some of you in your life or your roughest week for a long time. And it's good to be reminded, hey, you're still highly favored. And God is with you. And you are blessed. You are blessed. We are fully accepted by God the Father. And, and for, every, for everyone here today who's part of God's family, I want to underline the fact, you know, God totally accepts you. And, and if, if you don't fully belong to the family of God yet, the message of Christmas is a personal invitation to you to become part of the family of God. You are highly favored. There's an interesting, the, the word favor is used on a number of times about a number of people through the Bible. In, in, in Job chapter 10 and verse 12, Job said to God, you have granted me life and favor and your care has preserved my spirit. He was in the depths of despair, but he said, God, I recognize you've granted me life and favor and you've preserved me. Samuel, who became a prophet to Israel in 1 Samuel 2, 26, says, the child Samuel grew in stature and in favor both with the Lord and men. Acts 7, 46 talks about King David and says of King David, David who found favor with God. So those are just three major figures from the Old Testament who found favor with God. And then suddenly, 
the angel appears to this teenage girl in this obscure community and says to her, not Mary, your favor too, comes to her and says, you are highly favored. And, and let me point this out to you this morning. There is no record of any quality in Mary that was being rewarded. There is no mention of anything she did to qualify to be the mother of Jesus. The angel came and the angel said, here's where it's at. As far as God's concerned, you are highly favored. I don't know, um, I don't know if any of you follow Jimmy Darts on Instagram, do you? Pretty quiet. All right. All right. We got one. All right. There we go, folks. All right. I'll explain Instagram to some of you later. But, all right, Jimmy Darts is a guy, and he just, he just goes around to different settings. And, like, like I, I saw something a few days ago where he was in a store, and um, folks make donations to support what he's doing. So he's in this store, and he says to a lady, I will either give you $1,000 cash for you, or, and he opened up a little suitcase, he said, I'll give you $10,000 cash to give away here this morning. And she said, well, I'd love to help others, but I'm desperately in need. He said, that's fine. Gave her $1,000. Went to somebody else and said, what's the deal? He said, here you go, $1,000. And, and, and then he came to somebody and, and said, she said, I'll give 10000 away. And, and, and that person went and found a lady and gave her $10,000. And the woman said, my son has been really sick all year. I haven't been able to work. She said, that $10,000 is going to absolutely change things for me. Okay. It was random. What had she done to deserve? She was in Walmart. I think he does a lot of stuff in Walmart. Hang out in Walmart, folk. You never know. <laughs> right? Right? So, 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 I mean, she was just there in the store, and, and suddenly somebody comes over to her and says, hey, here's a case with $10,000 in it. It's like, whoa, I'm going to get arrested. She stole it from somebody. <laughs> what did she do to deserve it? Nothing. It was totally random. And when the angel came to Mary, we ask ourselves, what had she done to deserve it? The answer is, absolutely nothing. God chose her. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4 says this, long ago, even before he made the world, God chose us. I'll leave it there. It's a long verse. Even before he made the world, God chose us. Long before we were ever born, long before we could ever do anything to, to earn, deserve the goodness of God or the grace of God, long before we could show that we were fitting of God's blessing in our lives, before the world was made, before we'd lived, before we'd breathed, before we did a thing, God chose that we would be His. You are highly favored. God chose her. And this morning, for every single one of us who's a part of the family of God, I, I just want to remind you that we're God's children, not because we earned it or deserved it. We are God's children because He chose us, and we are fully accepted in the family of God. You don't have to carry a burden of, I need to do this, I need to do that, I need to please God, I'm really not good enough. God chose you, period. Embrace it, be grateful for it, and live in the freedom that you are a child of God, fully accepted through the Lord Jesus Christ. Just a teenager in a tiny town, but God knew who she was and where to find her. And maybe you're here this morning. Hey, who'd have thunk it? Sunday morning in December of 2023, sitting in a converted warehouse. Maybe you're here today because God wanted you to be where he could find you and he could talk to you. And many of us are here today because 
God used somebody. It wasn't the archangel Gabriel, but God used somebody to talk to us and to start things opening up and to bring us to realize that Christ is our Savior. Romans chapter 3 and verse 23 says this, What can we boast about doing to earn our salvation? Nothing at all. Why? Because our acquittal is not based on our good deeds. It is based on what Christ has done for us. How do we end up where we are today? God chose us. God chose us before the world began and because God drew us to himself. And some of you today, God is drawing to himself right now. You may protest, I don't think I'm good enough. You may think, well, I'm not really the religious kind of person. But the reality is this, God doesn't do background checks. In fact, when we put our faith in Jesus, he wipes the record clean. I love that. I love that. Highly favored. The, 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 the Greek word, the New Testament, as many of you all know, was written in the Greek language initially. The Greek word translated into highly favored is only used one other time in the whole of the New Testament. Here in Luke 1, where the angel speaks to Mary, and Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 6, where it says this, He has made us accepted in the Beloved. He has made us accepted. All right. Let me say that again slowly. He has made us accepted. There's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do. Just open your heart to it. He has made us accepted. God looked down through the corridors of history and saw you and said, I want him to be mine. I want her to be mine. I changed my car a couple of months ago, and uh, I, I went and I tried out the car that looked most attractive to me. It was bright orange. <laughs> but it wasn't really too comfortable. It was a bit rickety and basic. So I didn't take that one. So then I tried the one that really appealed to me, a gleaming Mustang. which suited me down to the ground until I realized I was almost sitting on the ground. <laughs> and getting out of it was a work of art. <laughs> and then I saw the car I've got now. And I thought, I like that. I'll take that one. God looked down through the corridors of time and said, I want him. I want her. And if you feel some tug in your heart today of God calling you or calling you back to himself, I want to say this. Don't hold back. Don't hold back. You are totally accepted. You don't have to prove yourself. God just wants you in his family. You who are highly favored, and then the second thing the angel said was this. The Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. What a great thing that is to grasp. God with us. God wants to be with us. As many of you know, because I've told the story before, my wife and I met in Bible college. And... Um, some point early in our relationship, we kind of, you know, I said, what are you going to do Saturday? And she said, I'm going shopping. You wouldn't want to come. I think that might have meant I don't want you to come. But anyway, you know. <laughs> and trust me, after the experience, I didn't want to come. But, I, but, 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 she, but she said, you know, so she said, you wouldn't want to. Oh, yes, I would. I, lo I love it. <laughs> Sorry, Lord, that was a lie. <laughs> uh, but I, <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I love it. I'll come shopping. Yeah, I love it. I'll come shopping with you. And you know what it was? No, I hated the shopping. That was the, that was the afternoon I learned how ladies shop, and it's very different to how guys shop. And, and, and I, you know, I was young and inexperienced, and I didn't know. 
you know, I thought, I thought everybody shopped the same way. You go in, see what you want, and get out. I didn't realize you, you, you go through every mortal thing. Pick out something you like, and then say, well, now I'm going to look at a few other places first. And then go back to the first place and buy the thing you picked out. I didn't know, I didn't know you ladies do it that way, but I, I learned that day. But here's the thing. I just wanted to be with her. That's what it was about. She's going shopping. I want to go shopping. I want to, I want to, I want to be with her. And part of the beauty of the Christmas story is grasping this. God wants to be with us. God came to be with us. We were separated from God by our sin. But Jesus came as God with us. In, in, in Matthew's Gospel, chapter uh, 1 and verse 23, it says this. The, the, it quotes a prophecy of Isaiah 740 years before Jesus was born. It says this. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel. We sung it this morning. Emmanuel means God with us. God with us. That's the most amazing thing. We could never get to God by our own efforts. So you know what we celebrate at Christmas? God came to us. God wanted us so much to be His that He became Emmanuel. He became God with us. What made the shepherds rejoice as they went back to their fields? What was it that caused the wise men to fall on their faces and to worship in, in the stable? It was the realization that God was no longer a distant, scary figure off some other place. But the fact is this, the creator and the sustainer of the universe had come to them. He is a relational God who stripped himself of his glory and came, became like us in the form of a baby who was all God, all man, and who lived on this earth. For many years, if someone said to me, I, I'm, I'm, new to, you know, I'm new to the faith, and I'd like to get into the Bible, what should I read? I used to tell them to start at John's Gospel, because that's what I've been told for years. Okay, don't tell anybody to start at John's Gospel, folks. Let me quote, this is the King James Version where I first learned it. Let me quote the first chapter. So they're starting in John 1.1, 1, 1, all right? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Are you lost yet? Because it goes on. Mark's Gospel is the key one. If someone's just trying to get into reading the Bible, really is. But, but, that, but that opening verse in John's Gospel, here it is in the NIV, it says this, in the beginning was the Word, that's talking about Jesus, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So here's the thought there, Jesus, right in the beginning, eternally, Jesus has existed, He is part of the Trinity, He is God, and He was with the rest of the Trinity, with the Godhead. So right back from time immemorial, because God was never created, Jesus was there. And here's the stunning thing about, uh, uh, about the Christmas story, verse 14 of John 1, and Jesus, the Word, became flesh and made His dwelling among us. That's the amazing part. He became flesh, He made His dwelling among us. Talk about full acceptance. Jesus came to be with us. He left where he had been for a time immemorial. And he came to this earth as a helpless baby. Some of you may be looking at life just now and you're trying to think, where's God in all this? I don't feel God. I don't see God. If God's there, why is this going on? Where is God in all this? God is with me, 
Really? I, and I pray before we finish today, and we're getting close to that, honest. Bef before we're through today, I pray that you'll be convinced beyond the shadow of doubt that God is, God was, and God will always be with you. Because he is Emmanuel, God with us. You are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you. Blessed are you. Mary, who seemed to be the most insignificant, the angel says, you're fully accepted, highly favored. God is with you. And you are blessed. You are blessed. Can I suggest that when the head honcho among the angels comes to you and announces you're blessed, I think you're going to be blessed. <laughs> I think that works. Now, Mary didn't have it easy. It was a tough road. Just remember, ultimately, she watched her son die the most horrible of deaths. But God was with her. God was with her. You were blessed. There's a, there's a wonderful story tucked away in the book of Numbers. And I, I'll just say this and then I'll finish. And if you, if you go to that YouTube app and look up our notes, you'll see the stuff I didn't get to today. But, but here you go. The story is about when the children of Israel were traveling towards the promised land. There were hundreds of thousands of them. Some say millions even. And, and, and the people, some of the people who were living there got really nervous. And there's a guy who was called Balak, who was the king of Moab. And he wanted, he, he called a prophet that they knew and said to him, I want you to curse the children of Israel. And he said, you know what? I'll pay you a lot if you'll curse them. And then God spoke to Balaam. Numbers 22, 12, and said this, don't do it, God told him. You are not to curse them, for I have blessed them. Okay, here's a statement I'd love you to really get a hold of and stick in your back pocket. No one can curse what God has blessed. No one can curse what God has blessed. We live under the canopy of the blessing of God. In fact, in Ephesians chapter 1, and verse 3, it says this, How we praise God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every blessing in heaven because we belong to Christ. We are blessed. You may say, well, where my life's at now, I don't feel blessed. Mary probably didn't when she had to go off to some place while they all talked about her morals. But she was still blessed. But she was still blessed. Your life mightn't be in the happiest of situations right now, but don't lose sight of this. God's blessing is yours. God has spoken blessing over you. You are fully accepted. The Lord is with you. And you are blessed. Because Christ came to earth to become our Savior. One of the things about home is when we're at home, we're fully accepted, just as we are and for who we are. And the truth is this. Christmas reminds us that God fully accepts us as we are and for who we are. And a lot of you here this morning come from a background where, 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 where things were laid on you that you need to do and you need to get better at this and you need to be more this and you need to be more that and you need to be more holy and you need to be in church more and you need to pray more. And it's like, please, somebody stop this. Please, somebody stop it. We are fully accepted by God because Jesus' death and resurrection fulfilled all God's requirements for us to be forgiven. And we're the children of God today because God has spoken blessing over us and accepts us fully. Let's pray together. Father, I pray today that, Lord, just a fresh awareness 
of being accepted fully by you might impact every one of our lives. What a great salvation. You ask nothing of us. We trust you and receive eternal life. God, help us to trust you. And as we celebrate this season, Lord, to remember from time to time, I am highly favored. God is with me. And I am blessed. Amen. 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 Let's stand and sing with the band tonight.